Hello. So I was passing by a charity shop last week when I came across a medium format camera. There it is. This is called the Coronet Clipper. Just gonna say, I forgot to mention in the video, this camera only cost me 10 pound and I bought three films off Amazon. They cost me, I think, 15 pound. So altogether, this cost me 25 pound when I was developing myself. I maybe wouldn't have done this if I was sending them off to a lab. It takes 120 film. Absolutely gorgeous bellows. I've never shot 120 film before, never shot medium format before. I've always liked to try it. Um, not not too bothered. Uh, this camera is from 1959. Um, back when this camera was made, 120 film wasn't seen as a professional film the way it's seen today. It was just a consumer film. Um, and there was lots of different sizes of film back then. All I know about this camera is it's from 1959 and it's a cheap and cheerful film camera. It's actually in really good condition. Um, if I open it up at the front, extend the bellows. Um, look at the size of that. That's that's all of your film is going to be taking up that whole space. It takes six by nine centimeter frames. And I'm just gonna talk about the problems with this camera. Um, so first of all, shutter speeds, a 30th of a second, a hundredth of a second, and bulb mode. But there's no way you can put a shutter release cable, so that's a bit dubious. There is room for a tripod. Maybe that would be okay. F16 or F22, that's all you've got with this, and it's just these little, you just slide it from X, F16 to F22, just a little slider. Um, so I practised and practised before loading up this film, because I've never shot 120 film before, um, and I came across a couple of problems. You cock the shutter, you set it to a hundredth of a second, and if you don't press the shutter hard, the shutter opens but doesn't close. So I had to practice pressing it hard and smooth so that the shutter opened and closed properly. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up with no pictures. You're just gonna end up with no, no photos. So if you are gonna buy one of these charity shop cameras, I would suggest practicing as if you've got film in your camera. Have a look at how the shutter works, um, stuff like that. Because I found that out before I went out shooting. So I knew that when I was out, I was going to have to hold, not hold, but I was going to have to firmly press the shutter in order for it to actually take a photo. Um, so I practiced and I was quite confident. So I went out Um, I bought, um, I went on Amazon and bought three rolls of FP4. Never shot this before. I basically only got it because it was the cheapest. And FP4 is a 125 ISO or ASA speed film. And the fact that this can only go F16 hundredth of a second. If you know the sunny 16 rule, the sunny 16 rule says that if it's bright and sunny outside, you should use F16 and the shutter speed should be as close to the ISO as possible. This can only really go at a hundredth of a second and F16. If it was a bright and sunny day, the 125 FP4 that I bought would be okay. It wasn't a sunny day, it was overcast, it was cloudy, but it was quite bright. And I was quite keen to just see if it worked. Um, I knew I would end up with a lot of silhouette type shots, but I was hoping that FP4 would have like a decent exposure latitude. Um, and I'd maybe be able to be brightened up a little tiny bit after I'd scanned. So I went out, I shot, and as I said, I had trouble keeping the camera still. I ended up with two or three unusable pictures. One was completely overexposed, one was completely underexposed. Um, I just, I'm just thinking that maybe the shutter didn't even open on that time. So I've scanned negatives and I'm just going to talk you through the photos. 
this picture is so dusty because um, I couldn't be bothered blowing it with the duster. Um, it's just the way I've been handling them. I haven't been particularly precious about these pictures because it's just an experiment type of thing. I probably should have dusted it off really. So let's have a look at the picture. Quite contrasty. Like you can see that it's. If this was a sunny day, there'd be a lot more detail in the building. But it was quite a bright, overcast day, if that makes sense. Um, again, you can see lots of blur. That'd be me forcing the shutter to open and close. So for this picture, I was able to use the little leg on the camera. And I was leaning against the wall, looking through the railings of the church. So this one, again, it's quite still. Um, composition is not great, but the viewfinder on this camera is just a little tiny hole doesn't really give you a good picture of what you're actually shooting but i'm quite happy with this one um you actually got a lot of detail in that building there i only scanned it at 1200 dpi that's the whole point of medium format photography you scan on much bigger negatives so you're getting a lot more detail on there so yeah quite happy with that one let's have a look at the next one Blurry again, and again, lots of dust on this negative because I haven't been particularly precious about it. Um, you know what, It's despite the blur, it's actually alright. Compositionally, again, it's a bit random, but I quite like the fact that it takes up one corner of the frame. Um, not, not too bad. Next one. Now, this is where we can actually get into a bit of detail about this lens because, as you can see, there's no blur from motion. This was another one where I was able to use the leg of the camera, keep it perfectly still. Um, but if you zoom in, you've got quite a lot of detail on the bricks. There's not much motion blur. But then the further you get away from the centre, you get a lot of distortion from this lens. It's almost like it's got one of those Instagram um, blur, where you put the circle around your image and it blurs it like a fake thing. This is one of my first ever medium format pictures and it's come out quite nice um yeah yeah it's all right let's move on to the next one so again this was in the park you've got these nice victorian lampposts and again black and white film was a really nice choice on this overcast day but as you can see the lamppost may be quite sharp in focus well actually maybe not when you zoom in but you can tell what it is and the bench looks all right in focus. But then if you look at the tops of the trees, really blared out because of this lens. I think it's obviously just a very cheap camera, especially for back in the day. If you look at the last one, I think it's pretty much the same. Yeah, a bit more blurry this one. Um, again, a bit disappointed that a couple of them didn't turn out. Would have been nice to see like how still I could keep this camera. But the fact that this camera has got a bulb mode is a bit, mm, I don't know why, but it has got room for a tripod, um, but there's no way you can put a cable release in for the tripod, um, and I don't trust the shutter to open and close um, when you're pressing the shutter on bulb mode, I don't, I don't trust it. Maybe back in the day, this was a perfectly functioning camera but to be honest it's in actually it's actually really in good condition like these bellows there is a lot of mark on them still like i reckon this is pretty much still brand new could have took a tripod out maybe that would have given me a bit less motion blur but the fact that this was a camera like cheap and cheerful back in the day and um, for anyone to use i don't think anyone was getting the pictures back how they expected Overall, I'd say it's probably worth the experiment if you've never shot medium format before. Um, I had a real hankering to want to go and shoot medium format before I'd done this. Now, I wouldn't do it without a proper, genuine, fully functioning, working camera. Um, I did develop these pictures myself as well, so that cuts out some of the cost. I probably wouldn't have done it if I was sending this off to a lab, because I sort of knew the pictures weren't going to be great. Um, experiment with the camera beforehand but you know if you see one of these cameras in your charity shop um, and you've never shot medium format before I would suggest yeah go for it have a bit of fun it's worth it just to learn how you 
load a camera up with 120 film um, and develop them with 120 film, just loading up the Patterson reels, just a bit different. So yeah, give it a go. I'm now lumbered with two rolls of this that I'm probably not going to use in this camera. Whether I'll buy a medium format camera in the future is to be seen. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought I'd do it because, as I said, I'm a hobbyist. I'm not a professional. Um, doing things on a budget is just my way because, as I said, I don't need to buy these cameras or films. Hope you've enjoyed it.